Hey there. Welcome back. It's uh, Monday. I know. I hope you had a good weekend. Um, I I did. I mean, n n nothing too ec exciting except that the Packers won. And they're going on to play the Cowboys. So that's, you know, that's a good thing. Um, so where I was last time, I didn't do anything over the weekend, really. Um where I was last time was just creating this door for the cargo hold. And I think what I need to do is just UV it now. So uh, let me just go to that layer that it's on. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna do it individually, I think, and then I'll combine all the parts afterwards. So here's the main part of the door. Um, well, I think I will just combine it all. I think that'll be a little easier because I may not need to UV this twice. I don't know that I need to UV the hinges twice. So I'll just, uh, well, first I'll turn on the screen display here and then uh, I'll just apply the scale just to make sure that's done. Um, and now I can just maybe select, uh, well, it didn't. Combine now, did it? Well, sometimes it doesn't want to do that. There we go. That that did it. All right, so let me grab this, and I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to press uh, Shift H to hide everything. I think I'll just grab this edge, and this edge, and this, and I just want to split this up so it doesn't pull too much. Control E, mark a seam, and now let's select that, hit U, and unwrap. And that's okay, but it's I'm not liking the way it's uh, angled there. What's my deal here? Oh, that, everything looks okay there. Oh, you know what? I bet I did. No, I did the same edge on each one. Well, okay, that didn't. Let me try Smart UV Project and see what happens. Yeah, I like it, but I don't want to split that off like that. All right, well, let me go back here and let's see what the issue is. Let's see. One, two, three, one, two, three. It looks like I, I got them in pretty much the right place. Let me try this, and if this doesn't work, then I'll just go with Smart UV Project. Sometimes that's what you got to do. Let me uh, mark a seam there. Let's try that. Let's try this and see how it goes. Unwrap. Yeah, I'm still. Uh, let me try conformal. That's a lot better. Yeah. Let's just go with conformal. All right. Uh, let's hit Alt-H and bring everything back and do the same thing on this one here. How's everybody doing out there? I appreciate you coming by and hanging out. Uh, Packers fans. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid we are breed, aren't we? I tell you. So I'm going to mark these seams here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with I'm going to go with this one. Uh, mark a seam, and this one over here. Mark that seam. Now I'm going to select this with the L key. I'll go ahead and hide everything. Shift H. Oh, the handles aren't. A part of that object yet are they oh you know uh, I don't know if I have applied the modifier on that yet so I'll need to do that now let's unwrap that that's looking pretty good I'll take that yeah what about these let's see what um, no it looks like I got them applied okay um, so let's go ahead and take these, unless they're not 
polygons yet, and they are not. So I can press Alt C, convert to polygons. There we go. Now let me combine all these. There we go. Yep, that helped. Okay. So this guy right here, um, I should be able to maybe just take that edge there and uh, mark a seam. And let's try this. Unwrap that. That's not too bad. I can live with that. Um, and this one over here. And try this. Yeah, okay. So now let's take all of it. Oh, I was going to only do one of the hinges and then duplicate it, wasn't I? Let's just try that. You know, they're going to be so small in the UV map, it's probably not going to matter much. Yeah, let me just uh, select these two and see what happens. And I'll use Smart UV Project. And we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's not great, but let's try it. All right, so I'm going to select everything over here. And I'll press Control A to Average Island Scale. And Control P to pack it all in. And there we go. Okay. That packed in fairly tightly. Uh, we could maybe try this. Expand this. Or increase the margins a little bit. Give it some breathing room. Okay. And uh, we may be ready now to take it into Substance Painter and just throw a material onto it. I don't need a whole lot there. Um, all right, so I guess I need to give it a name. Let's do that first. We'll call this uh, a Cargo Door. I'll also give it um, a material over here. Call that cargo door. All right. And now let's add vertex color to it. Um, looks like there are two main materials here. So let's go ahead and split those out. Uh, I will in here first select these two and then switch over to vertex paint. And let's give those a blue. Oh, I got to turn this on right down here. There we go. Now we can see that those are sl are selected, and give that a blue with Shift K. All right. And then um, all of this can be pretty much the same material. I think. I don't think we need to work too hard at putting separate materials onto that. And let's just go with a green here. There we go. All right. Now, Substance Painter. Oh, you know what I need to do? Uh, first of all, let's take this and raise it up just above there, just above the ground plane. And I think I think what I'll do is I'll place the pivot point of this right back here. So let's put it right in here. I'll move the cursor to it. And then I'll move the, th uh, the origin to the 3D cursor. There we go. Now, there is where the pivot point is. Let's now um, get it the right size. So let's bring everything else back and use the other pieces <coughs> to try and just get this to be the right size. It's a little big. So how big would a door be here? I feel like in one of these cargo ship things, you would have to kind of bend down to get through the door and 
So I wouldn't want it to be exactly, you know, uh, eight feet high or seven feet high or whatever. So maybe something like that. Let's um, run around here. I'll press uh, Shift F and then Tab. Now I can run around here. And is that about right? I mean, if I'm that tall, I don't know, it might need to be, let me go over here to the stairs. So here's our stairs. That feels about right. And if I go over here to the doorway, it feels a little small. So let me scale that back up just a bit. There we go. Something like that. Okay, let's let's go with that. Let me try this again. Yeah, so I open the door and have to kind of bend my head to go through the door. Yeah, I'll buy that. Okay. So, we've got, um, let me move this back. There we go. So we've got the name, we've got the vertex color, we've got the material, we've got it sized pretty well. Let me now apply the scale and the rotation. I'll go ahead and do that too. Um, yeah, control A, rotation and scale, there we go. So now I think we're ready to go into uh, Substance Painter. This, is there, is it, wait a minute, what, this, what did this say? Is it possible or not to skin a humanoid character that has separate body parts? Yes, you can um, bind multiple objects to one rig. So, um, but each of those objects are going to have to have the armature modifier on it, right? But you can, you can bind multiple objects to a single rig. Uh, remember when you made the character in the alleyway and you went to the site to get the breathing motion? What was that site? That was M Mixamo. Mixamo. I think someone mentioned that here, down here in the chat as well. Yeah. Uh, and is Mixamo free? Um, kind of. In that, um, uh, I think what Adobe is doing is making it so it's only going to work with Adobe Fuse. But if you have Adobe Fuse, then Mixamo or Mixamo is free. Uh, so I'm not sure. It's currently free, but once they incorporate it into the um, Creative Cloud, I don't know that it's going to be free anymore. Um, so. All right, um, let's see. Let's take this into Substance Painter. I'm going to export it out as an FBX. I'm going to turn on selected objects. Uh, cargo hold door. Let's try this. Huh. Something just hit the roof. <laughs> oh, I bet I know what it is. I bet it's ice breaking off and sliding down the roof. At least I hope so. I, <laughs> I hope that's what that was. Uh, we'll see. All right. Um, let's go into Substance Painter and bring that in. There it is. Bring that in. There we go. So there's the door. Um, I kind of want this to be pretty s scraped up, I think. Um, let's first bake the textures. Um, make sure the ID is for vertex color. And go ahead and bake that.
why in Blender is it better to make models with quads if, we're, if in Unity they become triangles anyway? That is an excellent question. Um, it, to my mind, it's mainly when you're dealing with something that's going to be animated and deformed, like arms and knees and uh, joints of a character. Because if you uh, use ingons on the joints of a character uh, where they bend, you never know where Unity is going to put a try. It could be anywhere. So you could get odd, odd um, um, bending on your arm. Um, but if you put quads in, you are... Um, making an edge right where you want it to be and then it'll just put a triangle within that quad. So for animation for characters that are going to be animated it is extremely important. In addition, uh, 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 sculpting programs like ZBrush, uh, Blender, um, any kind of uh, uh, sculpting program is going to work better on quads. So I think just the general idea had become just use quads all the time, you know, and that's not necessarily the case. So anyway, that's my opinion of it. Uh, let's see. Um, where's that solid here? Steel, rust. I think I want to try this. Uh, oh, I need to create a group. Let's call this uh, uh, let's call this door main. There we go, and I'm going to bring that up into that group. I'll split it out by color by right clicking on it and adding mask with color selection and choosing that green. So there we go. That doesn't look too bad. However, I think it's too dark. So I'm going to grab this color and drag it up a bit, like so. And then I want to increase roughness here. There we go. And rust intensity. Let's try that. really thinking now. There we go. Um, what happened here? There's a place that's just really shiny. Look at that. Right there. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't mark that with vertex colors, did I? Dang it. I'm going to have to go back and do that, aren't I? Ah. All right, so um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and do that because that's gonna cause a problem. I just didn't pick that up. Let me let me tumble around and see. Well, it looks like it did though. Why is that doing that? Hmm. Interesting. Well, let's keep going and see what happens here. But that's just very strange that it would be that shiny there. It's almost like I didn't UV map it. But I thought I did. Maybe I didn't, huh? Oh, let's try that again. Maybe what happened was I didn't get that UV mapped. Let's see. So, oh, and look look how tiny it is. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm. Well, let's, um, I'm going to take this. 
There it is right there. I guess it's because it's so small compared to the others. But that's not bad. And that's not bad, but let's take these two. And let's um, use Smart UV Project here. Um, okay. Now I need to grab all of that and control A, oops, control A, control P, like that. Yeah, let's try that. All right. Maybe that maybe that'll help. Let's export it out again. Actually, let me get out of this so I don't have don't save. Okay. Let me export out of here again. Selected Selected objects. There it is. Okay. Let's bring it in again. That's the only thing I can figure is that I didn't UV that particular piece. Let's try it again. There we go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, um, someone's talking about GIMP, and um, I've just downloaded Krita, which is um, um, an image manipulation program like uh, Photoshop, but it's open source, it's free, and uh, they just finally got a build for the Mac. So I downloaded that like a few days ago and I've been playing with it and it's pretty cool, I have to admit, uh, Krita. So if you haven't tried it, you probably already have, but, but if you haven't, check it out as well. All right, so let me start again. We'll call this door main. I'll bring in that steel rust. And I will pick the green. Now let's see how it did over here. Yeah, that's better. So I guess it was that I just didn't UV it. Okay. Um, once again, I want to make it a little bit lighter than that. I don't want it to be quite that dark. Okay. And I increased the rust a bit, didn't I? How do you spell that? Uh, K-R-I-T-A. Krita. It's right... Uh, where is it? Here it is. K-R-I-T-A. I'll open it. <laughs> I haven't really played played w with it too much, but I've seen some great work come out of this, so check it out, and tell me how you like it. All right, um, let me look back at Blender and that uh, reference image I was dealing with. Where did it go? There we go. So this is kind of a gold color here, almost. That's interesting. I don't think I'd have to make it gold. I could make it another color, I guess. But let's see how that works. Um, so I'll create another group. Call that um, door handles. And let's find a nice material that would go in here. I want to make these a little bigger. So I can see them. I don't think I want copper. There's gold pure. Seems a little too much. Maybe I'll just go with a metal, like 
this. Let me try this. Well, that's interesting. Uh, let's see how that works. I'll pick the color and I'll select the blue. Kind of works. Yeah, I kind of buy that. Okay. I feel like I want... Uh, oh, let's do uh, cargo door. I feel like I want this to be a little bit lighter, though. A little bit like that. Let's try that. Is that... Oh, that's the... No. <laughs> that's the wrong one. Let me try that one. Yeah. Let's try that. Yeah. Maybe just a little bit lighter like that. Okay. So, now that we've got that, let's take it into Unity, see how it works. I'm going to go ahead and export the textures out while I'm here. Unity 5, standard metallic, albedo, metallic, normal. Let's uh, create a new folder and call this cargo door and put those in there. All right, now let's go back to, let's go to Unity here. And I have put a few more of the um, containers in here. And uh, I think what we want is we want that door on this guy right here. So yeah, we want it right, maybe right over here, or something like that. All right, let's let's bring it in. Um, need to grab it. Where did I put it? Operation timed out. Oh, the services. Yeah, that's okay. Um, let's see. I'm gonna want the cargo hold here. Here's the door, the FBX. Bring that in. Let's put it out here in the scene. There it is. Spin that around. Okay. Now let's uh, bring our textures in. And um, Oh no, I want to go back to my Substance Painter. There we are. Cargo door, and I'm going to bring those in. Now, we were talking about tries and quads and animation. Let's just say for some weird reason, I don't know why, this door needed to fold, I needed to animate it at down the uh, uh, center here, down that vertical center. And the problem is, is because I didn't use quads to tell Unity that, that an edge has to be there, it cut the tries horizontally. So if you aren't going to be animating it, it isn't a huge... Um, uh, problem by any means and because as you saw this whole door here on the front is just one big ingon and it just split it up well like that so that wasn't a problem that I didn't have quads because I'm not animating it all right um, let's do this and let's bring in the textures here see how it looks And fix. All right. Still looks pretty. A lot 
darker in here than in um, Substance Painter. And I think the reason why is it's getting its um, reflection from uh, the skybox out here like this. So we'll just have that solid blue color. But that's okay. Uh, when I work on the lighting in here, hopefully that will change a little bit. So I'm going to spin this around and call this 180 here. And then let's put it into place. Let's see if we can find a place to put it. How about over here? Let me... Uh, something like that. Uh, I feel like it should be a little bit higher. Like that, maybe? You think someone could get through there? Let's run around and see. Yeah. I think that could work. All right. Now I think I need to put a few of these up in here. Um, let me turn off the lighting real quick just so I can see in here a little bit better. Uh, let me take this and maybe every, do we need it every platform? I guess we would, or how about every other platform? It seems like maybe one here and one up here. And if you want to get out, you've got to go up the stairs maybe. <laughs> Let's try that. I'll spin it around here like this. Go. Let me do 270. And this one I'm going to put up here. Right over here. Yeah. Maybe right there. Well, how about right here in the center? Yeah, so you come out the door, go down the stairs. Yeah, okay, so uh, let's put this one up here. And I'll just do one as I as I said, every other platform. There we go. And do I need one more? No, I'm not going to put one way up there. So yeah, just three I think is okay. I'm going to duplicate and turn those around over here. Uh, let's rotate around here, and, uh, wow, that went too far. Let's go this way. There we go. So it looks like 90 here. There we go. Oops. And let's put those in place. Um, these need to be over here, don't they? Like this. That. Uh, I think they're too far in. There we go. That was a little too much. And there. Okay. Now we have our doors. Yeah, okay. Let's run around and see. Can we see? I can't see them yet up in there. Just a little bit up in there. So I got to deal with lighting now. Okay, good. 
So, the, the lighting. Let's see, I think what I need to do Uh, what shader do I choose in Unity when I have a baked texture with shadows emission shader or just an unlit shader? Um, with shadows. So you've baked it out of Blender with shadows. Um, I guess you would just use the normal standard here. I think you'd use the normal standard. However, I, I would I would tend to say that you should let Unity bake the lighting for you, bake the shadows for you. Unless are you talking about like a a um, a character? Because the only way I can, the only thing I can see the only reason I can really see to um, uh, bake the shadows would be on a character. Other than that, if it's not moving in the scene, you ought to just bake the shadows in Unity, I would think. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, 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 let me know what your, uh, what kind of object it is. Um, let's see. I want to, I want to make this all clean and pretty here. The organiz the organization of this is important. Create folder cargo door. And there we go. Cargo door. Okay, so we've got that organized. So what I want to do Oh, the whole game is baked and won't move so that's fine um just your st uh, standard sh unity here um sh should be fine the material should be fine and the camera will never move yeah i would let unity do the baking honestly i'd let uh if you aren't going to have anything move do your you know materials or uh, uh, textures however you want to do them in Blender and or Photoshop or Krita or however you want to do them but then bring everything into Unity and then set up the lighting in Unity and let it bake it because it's going to do you just turn on auto build here and it's going to bake it all for you if you make sure and choose static uh, here. So you choose that, make sure auto build is on, and it'll just do the lighting for you. It'll build uh, these here. Um, and it should work pretty well, I would think. Um, I hope that helps. Uh, which uh, recording software am I using? Um, recording with game game show right here. It's like 20 or 30. It isn't very expensive at all. So that's what I'm using. Um, okay, so let's uh, think about lighting in here. I really am tired of the directional light. I hate it. Let me get rid of it. I was just using it uh, because it was there, <laughs> not because that's what I wanted. But what I want to do is now create a couple of lights like a spotlight here. And let's see if we can create kind of a spotlight type of thing in here. Let me uh, increase the spot angle here, the intensity. 
No, okay, I'm not getting anything. Mainly, probably, oh, probably because, let me think here. Why aren't I getting any feedback here? Nothing. All right. That's interesting. Oh, there it is there. Okay. I just had it too far away. Let's increase the intensity there. There we go. Spot angle. There we go. So I want these kind of... Now, it isn't going to be... Um, I mean, there's no kind of... It isn't going to be motivated by anything. There isn't going to be a a light hanging from the ceiling or anything, but I just want to give the sense that it's that it's kind of let me try this. Like this. Oh. And um, let me take this one duplicate it and move it back to here all right maybe like this just want that kind of pools of of light type of thing that shouldn't be that high so let me there we go, something like that. All right. Uh, do I want it to be that pr pronounced? Let me see. Oh, I've got some Z Z fighting where the two panels, one's kind of over the other one so I gotta deal with that I don't want that but I do kind of like this the way you kind of move from one pool of light into another but I feel like we need something on the walls as well so let me uh, grab this and move this over here move it down a bit and angle it into the wall just a hair. See if I can get some sort of light on the wall here. That's kind of interesting, you, you know, that's kind of... Let me see. Yeah, something kind of like that that's kind of... Or maybe, you know, maybe what I need is a light over that door that kind of gives the sense that it's got a light fixture over the door. Yeah, so there's that, okay. And then we're going to need lights up in um, up in up in the platforms as well. Let me duplicate this one and move it down kind of put it over the door just to get a sense. I may have to put actually model something for this. But I just want to get a sense of it. Yeah, something like that. Doesn't need to be that bright. Bring it down a bit. Um, The range, let me try this. I don't want the range to be quite that. There we go, something like that. So I might put some sort of a light fixture there. Um, okay. Let's see, how about putting lights up in the platforms? I wonder what kind of light I need in the platforms. I should probably put one over each of the doors, huh? If I'm going to put one over that door over there, maybe some sort of a, a light over that as well. Um, I've got a spot, an area. No, I can't really use an area. Directional and a point. I don't want to 
directional. Either so I've really got spots or points that I can use. Let me try another spot here and move that over here. Way too hot. <laughs> and okay, so let's take that way down. Let's put it right down here. Get it in here. Let's see how this is going to work. Like this. Yeah, okay. I feel like it's a little bit too. Let me pull it out some like that. All right. That's not bad. Let me try and uh, duplicate it and move it up here. And duplicate it and move it up here. So we kind of get a sense that there are those doors. Maybe. All right, let's run around and take a look. Well, not bad, but not great. I kind of want, um, I think I'm going to have to model some sort of, of a fluorescent l light type of thing to go in there. Because I like, oh, you see how it's, oh, there it went. It was uh, baking the lights here. Let me try it now since it's already done the bake. See, that's not too bad. But I do need to come in here and get um, those doors. Where did I put the doors? Uh, where did I put the door? Oh, under the walls. Oh, well, that wasn't too smart, now was it? Let me make a whole new empty here. And, uh, we'll call this doors. <laughs> Let me try that again. There we go. And I'm going to then grab these doors here. And let's put them in there. Now, that's a little better. Now I can grab those and turn on static. So now they're going to bake here. We'll see how that goes. Okay, but if I go back to Blender and take a look at this here, we've got these lights here and I kind of like that. So I think what I'll be doing then is finding some sort of uh, fixture to model and then when I create the materials for it in Substance Painter I'll use an um, emission material for these so it'll look like they're glowing right and we'll use that in Unity as well all right so maybe well let's see what uh, what is going on here uh, let's see you put the door in the walls yes I put the door in the walls <laughs> the door won't be opening so we won't be able to see uh, <laughs> that there actually is a, a wall behind them so hopefully that won't be a problem. We, we'll see. Um, so yeah, I think this is kind of the lighting setup I'm going to be going for. I'm going to get more 
lights up in here on the platforms and uh, but I do want it to be kind of uh, dark and um, um, kind of it's not spooky or anything it's just moody how's that that's what I want all right any other uh, questions or comments or anything before I head out? I'm, uh, I think I'm going to call it quits for today because I'm going to need to go and find some sort of uh, something here on Google Images so I can, because I can't really see anything here. It's too, it's blooming out too much. I can't really see anything, so... Um, all right. Well, I guess I'm going to call it a day. I thank you so much for joining me and hanging out. Um, I love all the comments and the questions, and, and I love that people are beginning to connect and maybe come up with new you know projects. I'd love to see those. Um, but I hope you I hope you continue to have a good. Monday, if that's possible, <laughs> and uh, I'll see you tomorrow, same time, and we'll keep on going. Have a great day, and take care.